Hey everyone, I'm Armor Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Legends. Welcome to the video you've all been waiting for an exclusive first look on the newest, the latest War Master monster, Elvira. And as usual, I want to give a huge thanks to Social Point for giving me the monster, the cells, the gems to speed up, the runes, everything needed to, to make this video for all of you guys. It's an exclusive first look on this newest War Master. And if you've seen my last video on this monster, you would know that I am so looking forward to this. Because this monster has a trait that is just absolutely outstanding. Let's click on her. And let's check out that trait. Status effects have a 35% less accuracy against her. Gives immunity to blind to our allies. Applies area evasion at the start of the battle. At the very start of the battle, all of your monsters are protected from anything that monsters can throw at you. The enemy monsters. They can try to stun you, freeze you, possess you. They can try to do cooldowns activated. They can try to drain your stamina. Nothing is going to work against your team thanks to this little monster right here. So she's absolutely amazing. Her design is really great once you level up to level 4. And so I am really looking forward to doing this exclusive first look for all of you guys. Alright, so this is her first group of skills. The one of her skills is a shield that applies a 50% damage protection to one ally. That means any damage your ally receives for the next two turns, it's going to be cut in half by 50%. The next skill is called Sinner Agony. Deals moderate light damage to all enemies, 50% chance of applying sunburn to all enemies. So it's an AoE sunburn with a one turn cooldown. Sunburn will last for three turns. Next up is Vengeance. Deals heavy light damage to one enemy, 50% chance of applying sunburn to that single enemy monster. And an Aura of Trust removes all negative status effects and applies precision to our allies. And in my opinion, this is a pretty great supportive skill. Her next set of skills consists of Repent Sinner. Massive light damage to one enemy applies sunburn to one enemy, so a really strong offensive attack. A Aura of Forgiveness removes all negative status effects from all allies, and it heals all of your allies by 50%. A really great healing skill that also gets rid of any negative effect. A Aura of Wrath, it removes all negative status effects from all enemies, and applies damage boost to your allies. So a really great supportive skill. And what I like about this monster a lot, is that just about all of her skills that are supportive, they remove negative effects. So your monsters get a reset if they have NDLT, or blind, or daze, or anything that reduces their accuracy, reduces their damage. I love it so much. And then we have protecting light. This skill will block every single damage that is not the light element. If it's the light element, you'll take damage, or if it's a physical attack. But if it's dark element, earth element, nature, anything that's not light, it's a complete zero. You don't take any damage from it. And that also includes any sort of torture status effect, like burn, like ignition, and so on. And so I went ahead and leveled up Elvira to level 100, but I gotta say, I don't necessarily know what her best skill set is. Right now I'm going to run Repent Sinner, which deals a massive light damage and applies sunburn to a single enemy monster. Forgiveness, which removes negative side effects and heals by 50%. Words Won't Save You, which applies a 50% protection to all of your allies. And then Aura of Wrath, which is a damage boost plus clearing negative effects. Her ultimate attack deals insane light damage to all enemies, removes positive effects from all enemies, and applies mega stun to all enemies. So she is an incredible monster. And as for her stats, here they are. Her power is 3476. Her life is incredibly tanky, 41,922. That is a super high life stat, and her speed stat is also incredible, 3498. So what runes do you want to run this monster? Honestly, I don't know. I feel like she's honestly a team speed holder. And the cool thing about this monster being a team speed holder is with her speed set of 3498, she can easily go before one of your attacker monsters that has a regular speed set and no, and no speed rune. If they just have team speed and Elvira has team speed, your monster is going first, which means you can do the damage boost, and then your attacker can really knock out the opponent. So right now, I'm thinking pure team speed holder. I don't really think you need a life rune or a team life rune. Just because of her trait, being able to give your team evasion, you got this. You don't need to worry about taking damage. Like, from the offensive perspective, she's probably the most powerful monster. Because you can go into any battle and not fear getting mobilized. Not fear getting OTK'd by a level 130 monster that you can't immobilize or whatever. Especially recently that everyone, or like the top 130, maybe 150 teams, 30 players in the top like 150 teams have a level 130 Flamerion. A lot of them have a rank 4. The top 500 teams have like a rank 3 Flamerion. Especially when you can't immobilize a monster like that. Having this monster is going to be like the go-to free-to-play monster. You get this monster, it doesn't even matter if she's not leveled up. Like I'm going to utilize her at level 100 and you're going to see how incredible she is. I'm not even going to give her any runes. But again, I am thinking she's a team speed holder. That is what I'm contemplating right now. I also think she can definitely be an attacker. And why an attacker, you may ask? Well, because of the evasion. Again, she can't be immobilized because of that self-evasion to herself and to her team. So no matter what, you get a guaranteed attack. And when you have a skill like Repent Sinner, which is massive light damage, we have an AoE skill that can also apply summer to everyone. That can be a pretty formidable attacker. But for the most part, for the majority of players, I'm going to be saying Team Speed Holder. 
and then it's all about configuring your team to work against the enemy if they are way too fast then like this is the cool thing you can realistically run team speed on all three of your monsters and you're good to go the enemies they can all outspeed you but they can't do anything to you like i mentioned earlier they can't do cooldowns activated they can't stun they can't freeze they can't possess they can't land torture effects the only thing they would honestly be able to do is for the ai somehow the ai is going to magically have to remove positive effects to get rid of the evasion and then they're going to have to try to deny you which is really unrealistic so now let's enough talking let's test out this monster in player versus player oh and by the way i forgot to talk about relics she can hold the amulet relic and she can also hold the sword relic so i'm not too familiar with the sword relic for the amulet relic i normally always recommend the healing amulet and so obviously if you have this relic you would want to put on the monster but i also don't really think she needs a healing amulet once again if you look at her skills she has a 50 percent recovery skill for your whole team and then again the evasion just i don't feel like she needs that much healing because of evasion so if you have some other amulet that might work better for her you might want to utilize that but with that being said this is the first team i'm going to be using it's going to consist of a vault and a super dan and as you notice my super dan is 115 vault is 110 but look at their runes super dan doesn't have any runes voltic he's not fast at all but i just want to showcase the amazing potential of this monster paired in the right team like now this is what i love you don't even need high level runes to compete with the best of the best just because of this monster just because of her trait she makes she makes the any team just about usable so let's see what i can encounter and here's another thing even if you face one of her that's level 130 that has level x runes so what if the enemy goes first they're gonna exhaust their evasion and then your team goes last and then you get to kick their butts it's incredible so right here looking at this team obviously i'm gonna go after ruby team and so let's just take on kill craze just so you can see all of them are 130 they're definitely gonna be going first look at that look at all those crazy speeds no way i can outspeed them ruby has 11,800. as for me i have 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. let's click fight and let's see how this battle goes so the ruby goes first and by the way i have to lose this battle but i just want to showcase how amazing she is as you can see evasion is on all of my monsters oh sorry you missed you know what let's hurry this up oblation staff is where you, you still have to worry about the relics but like so for example if you bring a level four monster <laughs> you'd have to worry about the oh look cool enemy even got their alt which is cooldowns activated you would have to worry about like a pest in the strap killing your monster but just look at this no matter that the enemy is super fast no matter any of that i get a turn in i get to attack how incredible is that and this is why i'm saying this is going to be like the go-to free to play monster it doesn't matter a lot of people don't like her skills like they feel like they're not war master worthy honestly her skills don't matter it's her trait that sets her apart from everyone else you partner this monster up with a turn transfer monster or an extra turn monster like a voltic a xyla a prince charmless you don't need to run look at my runes it's stamina and strength no one would ever recommend this you always need a speed or a team speed on volts but because of this monster you don't need to worry about getting mobilized you saw super dan he got an attack in and he has no runes he's just his base stats so with the extra turn monster you're free to just attack endlessly and that's what's super great about El like oh my goodness hopefully you guys can like see now doing a pvp battle how amazing she is and again like you don't even need her 130 right now she's level 100 i don't care about her skills now her skills are actually really good because keep in mind if she's the same level as some of your allies i could have given my volts a damage boost i could have removed any well see <laughs> there's no removing negative effects until like later on in the battle so right now it's pretty straightforward run with a turn transfer or an extra turn monster you get to dominate if you run this monster with barakor unfortunately i'll show it in the next video but for now let me just attack the enemy over and over and over again just so you you guys can see that i would have actually won the battle and let's see what she can actually do 10k volts cool yeah see pretty straightforward win right here but i'm gonna have to exit out um let me do an attack let me no i'm just gonna yeah i just want to kill metalhead so as you can see could have super easily won this battle um didn't really need super dan pretty much volt and elvira by themselves won the game cool i even got my alts what could i do with my monster well i can do a massive light damage attack that applies sunburn i can do i can heal but there's really no need to heal i can do this skill which applies 50 percent damage protection so that's probably what you want to do when you get a turn with her give your team damage protection or give them a damage boost depending if she goes first what i'm thinking now honestly what i'm thinking now is that this monster doesn't even need to be a team speed holder she can be an attacker because it doesn't matter if you go last you you honestly want your monster to go last like what happened in this video so you can give her strength runes she can go last and do repent center finish off the enemy monster 
and you're good to go. So she doesn't even need to be a team speed holder, or she can be maybe two team speed and a strength. But the thing is, she doesn't need she doesn't really need life. She doesn't really need team life. She doesn't need speed. You could do team speed, but you kind of want your monsters to go last. Again, like you saw in this video. So, oh my gosh, this monster gets more and more interesting. Let's quit this and move on to the next battle. All right, for this next portion of the video, I want to talk about a specific combo with Barakor. Barakor has a skill that I never recommend to anyone called Bloodthirsty. This skill will give your monster triple damage, but the downside is you blind yourself. So unfortunately, when you're blinded, you might miss the attacks. You're probably going to miss it more often than you land them. And that's not a good thing. You, If you give yourself a damage boost, if you give yourself an extra turn, you want to make sure that attack lands. Well... With the introduction of the new monster, the Warmaster monster, Barakor can actually utilize Bloodthirsty for some amazing combos. Because one other thing about Alvira, right now let's just click on any opponent. Let's go against this Kihaku, Jazzastar, Lum. Actually, Lum is kind of dangerous because I think she can actually remove positive effects. But nonetheless, I'm going to click fight and we'll see how this battle goes. So Jazzy goes first. Jazzy does his possession skill and nightmare skills. Oh, look at that. No damage and a miss. Silence, I'm speaking. What does this do? Okay, fortunately, that was, I think that was the stun skill. So nothing. And then Kihaku, you missed too. Jazzastar, hey, you missed too. Okay, this is where my Barakor gets a turn in. And again, this is like where when you pair up Elvira with an attacker, it's so easy to dominate the game. But if you had the Bloodthirsty skill, when I click on Barakor, take a look at this. He's also immune to blind. Why? Because Elvira also gives blind immunity to your whole team. So if you were to blend, if you were to run Bloodthirsty, you would give yourself triple damage. Triple damage with no being blind. So your next attack could be best recharged with triple damage, which would obviously obliterate whoever you attack. And then you still get an extra turn. And then you can use bestial hits. And just that combo is so mind-blowing in my head. The fact that you can utilize that much strength. Thanks to just the new War Master and specifically thanks to her trait. Once again, it doesn't even matter what her skills are. But if Elvira does happen to go before Barakor, you can even set up a damage boost. Now that's not the damage boost. You can set up a damage boost, a Aura of Wrath, which is a damage boost and then triple damage. How insane is that? The damage boost lasts for three turns on Elvira ally team. Oh my goodness, this monster is incredible. Seriously, from an offensive perspective, incredible. And now here's another cool thing you can do with this monster. You see my Will Razor face? He's technically my attacker, but he's also my deny monster because he has an AoE stun skill. So with, with the introduction of this monster, you can run so many unconventional team setups. Your deny monster doesn't need to be a 3-speed monster that has a deny skill, like a frostbite, like Ihaku. Now you can, for whatever odd reason, you can run like a 3-strength frostbite if you honestly wanted to, or a 3-strength Ihaku. I'm not recommending it, obviously because you need to plan for like team wars and different scenarios but from like a purely offensive perspective from a purely pvp perspective you can utilize the strangest of combos if you have a deny monster that it has team speed because you normally use them to supplement another monster that can work in pvp thanks to this monster if you have like i said a deny monster like will razor face that has a stun skill you can utilize it look at this he has two level four strength runes and he can do an aoe stun so even though he went last in, my, in the whole entire turn order, the enemy got like 2-3 turns in before Will Razorface got a turn in, Barakor got a turn, Alvira got a turn, I still get to go, I still get to do my stun. How incredible is that? Alright, and for this last battle, I just wanted to bring really weak monsters to go up against an opponent. Unfortunately, they do run a Pestilence Trap, and that Pestilence Trap is enough to kill my monsters before the evasion takes effect or anything. So my monsters are going to be dying, but at least I still get to showcase the high level of Flamerion, the Charmless, those monsters are a huge, huge threat, but thanks to the War Master, they're not that bad. So the battle starts, the Pestilence Trap takes effect first, look at that, I just took a max damage to the face, no problem, Oblation Trap, those still work, so be careful of Relics, again the Pestilence Trap, so be careful with the monsters you bring, they need to have enough HP to survive the Pestilence Trap. And look, Charmless is just attacking endlessly, let me speed this up. And it's just funny seeing him attack over and over. The fact that he's a ranked up monster and he can't kill me. And I'm only level 100. I don't even have any runes. How many attacks has he done? He's done so many attacks. And then Max Flamethrower. I survived Flame Marion with a level 100 monster. And yes, this is a free to play monster. If you just save up your orbs. If you get this mon if you collect 200, 2400 orbs I believe. You can get this monster at level 100. And she's usable at level 100. Honestly, if you saw my level 4 Necromancer video. You could see that the Warmaster monsters, Gortok specifically, Gortok 
This monster and Necromancer, they're usable at level 4 as long as you don't encounter a Pestilence Trap. But they are usable. They're usable at level 100 because of their traits alone. With Gortok, you counter any team that relies on stun. With Necromancer, you counter any team that relies on possession or special possessions. And with this monster, you counter anyone. You, you counter freeze reliant bases, you counter stun reliant bases, you counter possession reliant bases, you counter everything. There is nothing on defense that's even a threat. If there's a Timeron who's going to do cooldowns activated, an L canine that does cooldowns activated, none of that is a threat thanks to the existence of this monster. If the enemy has 130s, they are not a threat because they can't immobilize you. In my opinion, this is the most broken monster in terms of offense specifically. There is no monster that can do anything close to what this monster can do. You automatically get a chance. You get this monster, you hatch it, you put it, give it no runes, and you're good to go, as you saw. Partnered up with a Charmless, partnered up with a Voltic, partnered up with just some super strong attacker running three strength runes. She can run three strength runes, your attacker can run three strength runes, your third monster can run three strength runes. Honestly, I know this is absurd, but it would probably work because at the very end of the day, all three monsters would get a turn in and each could attack the enemy monsters one by one by one. Again, you would just need to be mindful of relics, but you could also bring in your own relics. Maybe relics that recover stamina, just in case they run Oblation Staff or Oblation Trap, but you pretty much got this. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to stop it at a 1 to 100. I'll do the 100 to 130 separately because, again, the skills don't matter too much on this monster. It's just the trait that makes the War Master monster, Elvira, so phenomenal. So, thank you all so much for watching this video. Huge thanks once again to Social Point for working with me to make this video. I love making these exclusive first look videos. I love the War Master monsters. They are truly something else that has never been in Monster Legends. So, now I want to hear from all of you guys. What do you guys think about this monster so far? at level 100. Do you think she's worthy of being a war master? Do you think she's the best war master? But you know what? One thing I didn't really talk about is defense because I think that's something we need to explore. Is this monster good on defense? It's kind of hard to say at the moment because if she is on defense, the enemy team has evasion. From an offensive perspective, the fact that you get to attack the defense, you know they have the trait working for them, you can somewhat more easily bring a way to counter. You can bring a monster that has removed positive effects and then a die monster. It's not that easy. But at the same time, if, if you know they're faster than you, you can let their evasion run out and you can use your evasion. For example, if you bring like a Gakora, Gakora can set up evasion, their evasion runs out and they attack you. You know, it's that's, that's a little complicated mess. But as far as a purely offensive perspective, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this monster? Do you think she's game breaking or do you think she could have been more amazing or she's missing something? Whatever you guys' thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. So looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts. And I will see you all very, very soon in the level 1 to 130 portion of the video. Thank you once again so much for taking the time to watch this video.